Section 2 of Captain Billy's Whiz Bang Volume 2, Number 17 February 1921 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Alan Lawley Captain Billy's Whiz Bang Volume 2 Number 17 February 1921 By W. H. Fawcett Drippings in the Fawcett By Captain Billy Along about the 1st of September last year, my cellar supply gave out, and on the second day I had a look of languor, like a homesick bum. Then it was that I met my old Turk friend, Casey, who immediately shanghaied me while he was cockeyed on a mixture of fuso oil, barbed wire, turpentine, tuba, rock gut, red eye, wood alcohol, ether, and dynamite. In fact, his mixture would make the dub of peace challenge the American eagle to mortal combat. Casey is a vagrant minstrel of human interest, and I was only too glad to accept an invitation to join him at his country home in Golden Valley. But here it is necessary to explain that Golden Valley is different than most communities in these good old dry United States. In Golden Valley, it doesn't appear to be necessary to distill the corn. Nearly every stock contains his gallon jug hidden away in the darkened recesses. The farmers merely leave the empty receptacle and come back later to find it has been mysteriously filled. Well, friends and fellow countrymen, Casey and I surely worked hard that night in the cornfields. And about the last thing I remember was Casey mumbling a story about a coloured family in St. Paul named Henderson, man, wife and two grown daughters who had been suspected of bootlegging for some time. There is also a goon in St. Paul named Johnson, Casey explained, who got very drunk and was placed under arrest. To the police judge's inquiry as to how and where he obtained the liquor, the negro replied, I found it in a cornfield, your honour. Did you ever get anything from Henderson? asked the magistrate. No, sir. Never got nothing from him. From Mrs. Henderson? No, sir. Not from Mrs. Henderson. Nor from Miss Henderson. Just a minute, judge. Is you all still talking? Out booze. New Year's morning, bright and early. Gus, the hired man, wanted to start off right. So he whispered to my eight-year-old son to go and find something with whiskey in it. The lad, in boyish innocence, replied, Just a minute, Gus, and I'll go and wake up father. I remember... The only time I ever was in New York. I was still a commissioned officer in the army and had registered at a Broadway hotel as Captain Gunn. I immediately got loaded, dreamed I was discharged and awakened to find myself shot to the devil. My brother Harvey, who was a buck private in the tank corps at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, met me at the Marlborough Hotel while he was A.W.O. Ling in New York, evidently on account of the lack of tanks in the tank corps. Harvey decided to bring one back to Gettysburg, and, believe me, boys, it was a mogul tank he had when I last saw him. Of course, he'll say the same about me. In fact, he accused me of being so rash as to pat a colonel on the back in a Pennsylvania depot with the salutation of 
Hello, old trapper. This is a hell of a war, but I really don't believe I did anything of the kind. At least, I can't remember having done so. On the return to Camp Lee, I carried along a goodly supply of medicine. Somehow or other, I managed to land in an upper berth, and when I woke in Richmond next morning, my faithful satchel and contents were safely in bed beside me. I cannot recall having ever awakened with a more pleasant companion than that old grip. I carefully peeked through the curtains to see if the coast was clear before partaking of a morning's nip. I shall always have a goat work for New York. After all, our likes or dislikes for a city depend entirely on how we enjoy ourselves and the friends we are fortunate enough to meet. I was treated with a reckless abandonment and true western spirit of congeniality. At first, their language was difficult to fathom, but later I became used to the lack of the letter R. If it ever happens, that four cars go up in price, so I can sell my 1915 model, I'll surely sneak away from friend-wife for a week or two of bright lights and green witches. End of section 2